Why, hello there, folks. Deadly Habit back with part two of my massive modulation tutorial. Yes, today we are going to take a look at the LFO modulator, aka low frequency oscillator. That's what it stands for. And uh, basically, what it means is it's an oscillator that is below human hearing, hence the low frequency, uh, usually in around um, below one hertz, <laughs> the way that it syncs up. Well, let me just start a new sound real quick, and I will demonstrate what it does. Okay, so right now we will move the X fader curve up to the sine wave. So in s before I showed you uh, on the one before this, the envelope tutorial, that it is used for the amplifier. So let me just put this, the LFO, on the amplifier, and it automatically starts playing. So, as you can see in both of these, it is going up and down. Let me just take this over to a square wave. And uh, voicing, let's make it monophonic real quick. That way you can see better. Okay, so as you can see up here in Smexcope, we have it amplifying up and down to the sine wave. So I will go over here, switch the shape to a square so you just see it turning on and off. Okay, now it's doing that really annoying noise. Let's switch it back to the standard envelope. Okay, so let's get right to it. So we will show the controls real quick. You have your curve selection right here. As you saw before, uh, there is two curves right here that you can morph between, like I showed you on envelope. So you can morph between these. You have your standard waveforms for the LFOs. Um, sine wave, saw wave, square wave, and triangle wave. Up top, you have presets that you can have, the factory. We'll go through these in a little bit. The button up here, mono, allows it so it syncs to all the voices you have it set to. So once you go to your voicing, say like this, if I, I do on some of my sounds, turn the unisono up, or the unison, up to 16. Show what that actually does since I have it on monophonic. Okay, we'll go back down to one voice. Okay, so that gives you multiples of the same voice. <laughs> so it makes it more impactful and louder. And you can also tune it with the, the spread on it like this. So Detune notes and stuff like that. Okay. Turn that back to one, since we're not going to be using that quite yet. All right, so back to the LFO. All right, so as I, showed, as I was showing a little while ago, you have the X-Fade control to go between the two curves. So you can morph between the two selections you have. So if I have a sine wave here and I have a saw wave here, right now in the middle it is combining the two. So I'm getting a more unique shape. <laughs> and you can also morph between them using the actual control value you have down here. Uh, you have the rate for your LFO, which is the speed it goes at. This is the default standard control. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you the numbers anywhere, which is kind of odd. But this, this is the only way you can modulate it within Massive. Or if you want to control this, say, with another LFO or with an envelope. So it pitches, or I'll show you something in a second. But if you want to control your rate within Massive, you have to do, use this way. Or you can use the sync, and you don't have the option to do that. But you can change the values using your DAW, which I'll show you in a future tutorial. But this is to actually sync to whatever BPM you're at. So let me pull up my bar right here. Okay, so I'm at 140 BPM. So it plays 16th notes, right? Well, it'll help when I actually put something on it. But I can go from up to 132nd, or if I go all the way, 32 out of 32, you have your ratios that you can control it with. Unfortunately, for some reason, it doesn't go to 64, which I just always found odd. But anyways... So, the P POS the, is the position where it starts at. Um, restart is if it restarts when you hit the note. Just turn sync off. You don't have the position sync for that either. Alright, so yeah, restart is it starts every time you hit the key. So you can have it so if you, it will just continuously be going if I leave restart off. And that way when you switch the keys, it jumps to whatever position it was in, in the LFO on the next key. You also have the amplitude right here, which is how much it affects whatever you do, uh, whatever you link it to. So say I link it to the amplitude. Again, well, that's not exactly the best example. 
Sailing into a filter, this is common that you'll see in dubstep. It is how much it will affect it. So imagine it as the curve is going up and down all the way. If I move the amplitude down, it would be only affecting up to, say, like here or so, or back down. And the other thing to uh, keep in mind with LFOs is giving both positive and negative values. So you're going from a zero to, say, positive 100 to a negative 100 down here, back to zero. So you're going back and forth with that. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using it. You also have the curve selections right here, which is for, like, on the envelope ones, how you had the unique unique different shapes you have. So we'll, we'll go through these in a little. Let me just go back to default. And you also have an internal envelope with this. So this is something you can use to control your values right here. So say the X fade curve to morph between them, you can use the envelope in between. And I'll show that in a second. 